Save versus disappointment, the DC check is very high. Dungeons and Dragons, released in 2000, which is surprising for how old it looks. Starring Jeremy Irons, Bruce Payne, Justin Whalen, Marlon Wayans, Thora Birch, Zoe McClellan, Lee Arenberg, and Kristen Wilson. Production budget of 45 million, a domestic take of 15 million, an international take of 18 million, for a total of 33 million, and a loss of 11 million. Not including marketing and all associated costs. Characters. Well, you know, if you've ever played D&D, you have pretty much met these characters before. The main difference would be that the people at the table basically playing the characters would have probably done a slightly better job. You've got the two human thieves, you've got the human mage. You've got the dwarven fighter, or just the dwarven dwarf, and the elven ranger, who's geared up in plate mail. So that already doesn't make any sense because they generally don't wear that. Or it's just breastplate armor, which they also generally don't get around in. Main villains are, of course, a pair of mages that don't really do a whole lot of maging. But you wait, is Baldy, is he a mage or is he like a dread knight or something? They present him like a mage. I think he's actually just a knight or like a serious high-end fighter that also doesn't do a whole lot of that. But the characters themselves, they range from pretty okay to just plain forgettable. Young Mage in the Ronin was probably one of the best actors in the group. The elf was okay, but her character arc and just everything about her was very either abrupt or incredibly slow. She kind of came across a little stoned. Having the dwarf in the party at all made pretty much no sense, and he was rarely, if ever, useful. Main hero is quite heroic. He does all the heroic stuff. He's with the reluctant hero, actually. And, you know, he's not terrible, but he's not exactly great. But of all the characters I want to talk about is how much Marlon Wayne's character irritated me. Ah, oh, snails? Snails was so annoying with his high preached little screams, overreactions, his overacting, goofy little ticks and twitches and just his weirdness. He was like a cut price ruby rod from Fifth Element. And spoiler alert, when he dies at the end of the second act, I was really quite happy to see his character gone. And from what I understand, Marlon was also very happy to be no longer in this film. So the score for characters are going to get a 1.5. Not the worst I've seen, but at the same time, they're so far from good. I, I I think underwhelming is the best way to describe the characters in the film. And I genuinely feel bad for Jeremy Irons. Story. All right. Now, one thing about D&D, one thing about running a game and playing in a game and enjoying a game is it's largely about the story. Even if it's heavy on the hack and slash and you're butchering your way through dungeons, each major action piece is connected by Story. Story is what propels a game of D&D along. Without it, you might as well just play a computer game. And the story in this movie encourages you to stop watching and just go and play a computer game. And as a GM, you sit there going, oh, I can see what they're doing, I can see where they're going, but man, your pacing's off, your presentation's off, oh, the motivations of the bad guys are off. It's kind of incredible how much effort and focus you put into your story when you run a game. And when you see a poorly run game like this whole story would have been you kind of like oh dude that doesn't really make any sense there's no payoff where's the build-up where's all the interactions where's the subtleties where's all the stuff that makes the story you know a really kind of good and exciting story experience it, it isn't in this film it's a lot of scenes there's a lot of set pieces it's a lot of connecting bits the most interesting stuff was happening behind the scenes, so to speak, with the politics at play, which were quite interesting until they got really dumb. Because while this had all the components of a D&D game, the quest and the heroes and the MacGuffin they're chasing and all the challenges and trials that they had to get through to get to the item, it all kind of felt underwhelming. Got some good glimpses of stuff in there, got some cool ideas in there, but they just didn't action those ideas in a way that made it super compelling. Overall, the score will be a two for story. If this had been a game that she sat down at the table to play, after a couple of hours of this, you'd be going, I'm kind of interested, but has the GM lost his notes and he's kind of ad-libbing? Or does he need another coffee? Did he get enough sleep last night? Of course, it doesn't feel like it. Look and feel. Well, I must confess that the look and feel of this movie is exactly what you'd expect a D&D &D movie to look and feel like if it was made back in, say, 1990s? Maybe the late 1980s. And certainly not in 2000. And certainly not for $45 million. It kind of looks like any other fantasy action TV show 
of the general time period. It feels like Hercules or Xena. You know, it's got TV quality all about it. This is late night TV on that channel you've never heard of before. A lot of the physical props worked, a lot of the practical effects worked, a lot of the set design worked quite well. Look, honestly, everything kind of worked. It just also kind of didn't. I mean, the CGI fell down hard. There's no denying that. There's not much really point in going into that because I'm sure that no one here is shocked that the CGI in this movie ranged from pretty okay to bloody horrible. But a lot of the physical stuff worked as long as you kept it in the dark or if there was a lot of shadows in play or it was set right. But every time her body armor was on display, the fact that she's got an armored belly button just, just there, looks pretty obvious, and the Madonna breast guard, that just stood out like, well, the hero sword looked kind of cheap. The magic rod of the red dragon control also looked quite cheap. Yeah, actually cheap. And well, once again, underwhelming. They're the words you're gonna use to describe this film. You gotta admire the bold moves of trying to have things like beholders and dragons in this show. But to be honest, the beholders were kind of out of place in the role they had, and they got zero use. I mean, beholders, man, if you played the game, you know that a beholder is a bad idea. And having them wandering around like guard dogs, but they don't get to do anything with them, is a completely wasted plot device. Such a classic iconic monster, and they did nothing with it. And this was totally a lightsaber fight, just not. Script and dialogue, okay, I, I need much more than two minutes to talk about how bad this is. So straight up, it's not good. Uh, the script and dialogue is really not good in this. All the actors did the best that they could with what they had. Jeremy Irons torches himself, trying to deliver something that isn't ridiculous, doesn't work. But some of the things that really stood out as bad is as follows. One, the most lackluster bar fight in the history of cinema. I've never seen a bar fight have less enthusiastic participants than this. Next is the story essential, Maze of Death. It was described as this labyrinth of heroic proportions. To get through there was this impossible challenge. No, it was not a maze. That was at best a hundred feet of inconvenience. Seriously, I think there were three chambers. It didn't take them very long and everyone else just walked along the top and watched him. And next is the final dungeon. The place where this incredible treasure hoard is and the great and vaulted rod of dragon control. It's down a short, crappy-looking tunnel and he falls down a hole. Dungeon's over. Have some loot. I pulled that stun on my players, I get hit with a rule book. And finally, the movie pulled this trick of telling, not showing twice. Like, major plot moments, major story development plot stuff was kind of glimpsed. And then when your characters came back, they then told you everything that they'd learnt in this short space of time that you never got to see, but they suddenly know everything about it. It's a kind of clever device if you don't have the money, I suppose, to do a large complicated scene. Do it once. It's like a montage. If you can do two montages in one movie, you're going really well and they better be good. Montage. We didn't get a montage. Montage would have been nice. So the score for this one is coming in at a 1.5 because it, it really did itself no favors in any of its choices. I mean, I'm sure I remember a couple of cool things, but they're gone now. Fun factor, okay, I'm a conflicted guy at the moment, because on one hand, D&D movie. On the other hand, this really should have been an animation. If you'd taken that money and you put it into an animation studio and you got to do all the things you wanted to do, or the vision in your head you could just go nuts with, with animation, because animation can do things that you can just cannot do in reality, that would have been great, but, this was not an animation, this was a live action disaster. And as a result, you generally don't feel anything other than underwhelmed, don't you? You feel like you missed out on something really cool, and that's not fun. It just wasn't fun. I mean, I got to play Spot the D&D reference, which was fun. I just, I, I was just happy when it was over, to be honest. I was happy it was done. And so, fun fact is gonna be getting another 1.5. Because, well, they tried and uh, mostly failed. Final score. Add all together, you get yourself a nine. It's not good. It really doesn't represent D&D or any of the games I've ever played, to be honest. Could have been so much better, but it just isn't. I wouldn't recommend it unless you feel like enjoying a 
bad movie. On a bad movie night? Oh yeah, this is right up there. This would be second or third pick. Funnily enough, I've also actually seen the sequel. I saw the sequel before I saw this one. And honestly, I have much better memories about the sequel. I'm going to have to see if I can find a copy of that again and uh, let you know how that goes. But as usual, I hope you're having a great week and that you make some time to go watch a movie. <laughs>